Hi Aquarius, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your August 2021 mid-month tarot reading. This is a reading for all Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. If you are new to the channel, welcome to you. I post new readings every Friday and again on Monday. And uh, to those of you who have been around for a while, thank you so much for your support and everything that you do. I love reading tarot. It's a lifelong passion. I, I feel it's part of who I am. And so it's wonderful to be able to connect with you and share your energy and do these readings. And, um, you know, if a reading doesn't resonate, you can always check back in a couple of days and just watch a new reading. You could look at other parts of your chart and get a more complete energetic profile or even look around on these Monday readings because the style of reading is different from week to week. I'd never try to make a reading fit. There's, pl there's plenty of new readings and the right reading will find you. Um, and if you like tarot and you like this channel and you haven't subscribed, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot here. All right. What advice? Do you have for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What does Aquarius need to know, please? Okay, let's do one more. There we go. So we'll begin here with the tarot, and then we'll have the angel answers, oracle cards as well. You've got your current position, you've got the magician. Ooh, that's cool. With the emperor, that's mighty. The, uh, your um, destiny here, you've got the Page of Cups. The distant past, you have the Ace of Pentacles. That's cool, too. The High Priestess is in the more recent past. The energy coming towards you is the Six of Pentacles. You're represented by the Empress. The person or situation around you is the uh, Nine of Wands. You've got the Seven of Pentacles in your hopes and fears. Six of Swords in the outcome. That's interesting that you have two Sixes here. Um, now, the bottom of the deck, these are your clarifiers. Now, before we get too far into this, you have here Earth, you've got Aries here. Um, you've definitely got all the elements here. So, it's it, there's like something about balance with those two sixes, right? They're always looking for balance, symmetry. And you've got it here again with the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Pentacles. Immediately, I, I saw that is sort of like those polarities that are presented in the, um, you have it here too, the light and the dark columns, okay? It can be about um, the balancing the sort of our natural instincts or desires and wanting to kind of force those to tempering, redirecting those and allowing things to unfold, allowing things to grow from a deeper spiritual level. And so there's something with this. There's like a push-pull dynamic is what I get here between those two nights, right? It's like one of you, and it could be you and another person, um, you know, one is is wanting to see things grow. For some of you, it's a little bit more organically, and maybe the other one is looking to create and wanting to, again, that word force comes in. I hate to use that, but, um, and two, if you're at odds with somebody here too, I don't, you know, I don't see them giving up on the relationship or the situation, okay? I do think they're tired of, if there's been a disagreement, they're tired of the disagreement, and I do see that resolving. But with the Five of Swords here, too, again, it's it's kind of looking at that and deciding I'm just not going to participate in conflict if that's for you. Um, but I do see, too, with this, not only that push-pull, but you do have nice elements in terms of stability here, growth, monetary stability, and taking action to create things around you. So in a, in a good way, I know sometimes when we talk about polarizing energies, it gets a little bit tricky. But again, I do feel like there's this energy of, of you know, taking some action and creating things, especially when, you know, when we start off with this, and we can go so many ways. I mean, I love to see the Empress here with the High Priestess, but you also have it here too, right? And so the Empress represents you, but there's the Emperor. So there's definitely an, a, a couple here. There's a relationship here that's very important. Now, if you're manifesting the relationship with the Magician energy, it's a match. Even if there's some differences, again, there's this energy of balancing one another out. And so the Magician is a card of creating around you. It's a card of empowerment. 
he has the infinity symbol above his head because you're being infinitely guided. You get what you expect, and this is that bringing heaven to earth. Your thoughts become things with the magician. And so you have everything available to you. For some of you, there may be new opportunities here in work that are definitely bringing in more money if it's more clients um, or new avenues or new ways of doing things. And with the magician, though, it is an energy of passion. It's an energy of transformation, of bringing things alive everywhere around you. This is high-powered energy. So you, one of the things that you do in general is you are an out-of-the-box thinker, and the magician embodies that, where you're wonderfully creative. You're not afraid either to take risks with the emperor and the empress here, too. So for some of you, the balance may be somebody else who's more of an earth sign. That could be what that is coming in. You've got an earth sign here that's maybe a little bit slower to move. Now, with the emperor, you've got wonderful protective elements here. Of course, he's the father. You've got the mother and father of the tarot showing up in this reading. And he, too, wears that red cloak. Okay, it's this desire, but his robe is also a symbol of wealth and power. It's a card of creating your own reality for sure and using your wisdom, all right, using your experiences as your guide. So some of you are getting very good at recognizing when an experience is going to lower your own vibration and just not messing around with it because the emperor wouldn't get, get involved in something he knew was not going to be successful, all right? Even though he is, like, you know, he leads a battle, he leads the charge, he also doesn't do things that are stupid. So for you, it'll be about using your discernment. He uses logic. Both of these do. They use logic in the conscious mind. And you have another um, interesting twist with the high priestess because that's the subconscious mind. And so it's when you see things like the emperor showing up with the high priestess, it's also an indication of not allowing maybe some of the mystical of things around you to override your like your ability to think and rationalize and things like that. So if there was some reason why something seemed like a bad idea to you, you're kind of using your instincts in tandem with this. I hope that makes sense. Um, there's, there's just so many rich symbols within these cards. I didn't mention this, but I guess I will before we go on. You know, the gown of the high priestess um, floats through the um, floats through the deck, right? And you can see it here. I just always think it's cool when we have the empress and the emperor here because you see the gown, you know, begins this pool of consciousness. It comes down in this waterfall and then it goes through on the emperor too. So it's like having that source energy is affecting or running through all areas of your life. So with the page of cups here in your destiny, some of this is just an indication that you like to have fun. You want to work hard, play hard. And some of you may have a little bit of a difficulty balancing that. And maybe at times you've gone out too late or done things that have maybe given a bit of a difficult or sluggish day at work the next day. Um, and part of that is you value that. You value having fun. You value keeping things lighthearted and not getting too caught up in drama and things like that. But with the Page of Cups, too, it's also about making thoughts become things. It's manifesting in the 3D reality. There's a wonderful energy about this, though, in terms of empathy, caring, loving, being a very genuine person. And so even though pages get this bad rap of being immature, it really is just more of that developing energy. So you may be one that you, when you go into new situations, you are able to go in in a way that's very, you're very approachable. And people find that you are, you're easy to adapt to new situations, new people, wanting to meet new people. The Ace of Pentacles in the distant past is a resource that was here. There may have been a turning point with money if it was a new job that started up for you, but it's long-term stability or a relationship too. Again, you have a commitment here. There's definitely a love relationship here that's getting balanced, that's getting you know what it needs to grow and move forward in a long-term way. So if things were kind of started and they weren't necessarily going because you've got the high priestess in there and that does indicate passive energy so it may have seemed like something took a long time to get off the ground too but I do see it developing and it feels very long term even in a job too there's like I said this long-term stability so with the high priestess it's really about having a knowing she's the card of the psychic it's balancing though 
Um, you know, and she is a card too of your subconscious mind. And so being able to make thoughts become things is a huge part of this. I've talked about this before. I think it's prima materia is the phrase, but it just basically what it means is that everything comes from the mind in this. And so it's really the influence of that conscious mind into the subconscious and then creating from there. So any information that you need, you're going to know it here. You're going to have the information. And for some of you, it's kind of sitting back, analyzing, taking things in, um, not necessarily springing into action right away. This can be a card of two of um, being, I don't want to use the word isolated, um, solitary is a better way to say it. So for some of you, you may have been single. Like we said, you may have met somebody. It didn't seem like it was taking off. But there's not a downside. It's not being lonely, okay? It's being solitary by choice. So for some of you too, especially with the way things have changed over the year and a half, you've got this interesting energy of wanting to go out, being out. Some of you may have learned how to adapt to being in more and find that you like parts of that. And so she is an interesting energy too because sometimes this can be an energy about... Um, at times get not getting along with other women too. So for some of you or women in general, if you're a man, I shouldn't have said other there. So for some of you, if you have a relationship too with this empress here, or there's a mother figure that you've got a challenge with. I do see you resolving that. Okay. I got into that a little deep because that's such a hard card just to gloss over. There's a lot of meaning in there. So the six of pentacles is a card that brings in balance. It's helping one another out. Again, in a relationship, you've got a wonderful balance between that emperor and empress. You've got it multiple times here. And so it's that giving and receiving, being in flow with each other. There's no resentment here, even though one person may have a little bit more. So in terms of work too, you end up feeling like you're getting paid for the services that you do. You're not being shortchanged here. You're putting things in, but you're getting a result too. So with the empress, she is the mother of the tarot. We talked about that. It's a wonderfully creative energy. It's a wonderful energy for you, even though she doesn't necessarily represent you. It's still pretty close in terms of feeling carefree, loving, uplifted, and growing all over the place. There's a vibrancy here. And so if there's, like I said, been a challenge with a mother figure or woman in your life, I do see that getting resolved, all right? And they may have said something dumb. I just get that. Like they said something careless. And you have this ability here, along with that page of cups, to kind of override that and decide, you know what, it's not that important. I'm not going to stick with that if that's if that's for you. And maybe that's only one person here. But the nine of, of wands here is not giving up. It is the conclusion of a cycle, though. So I do feel like if you've been through something with somebody or you've had to put in a lot of effort in something... And it felt like it just was a never ending kind of swimming against a current to get things going. You're in the place where it come, you come out of that with a lot of knowledge, experience, and an ability to be easy about things. You paid the price of contrast here. So as you come out of that, the situation, if you've had some friction with a person or like we talked about with work, you're, it's going to get a lot easier. So with the seven of pentacles, you are manifesting. You've got the six and seven here all right and of course the knight and the ace too but i just saw the six and seven close by each other and so it really is about seeing those cultivations of the garden of the mind and you have it too in um the magician all the flowers right at his feet are also an example of you know make turning thoughts to things and seeing things in your physical reality so for some of you there may be extra bonuses with work or even a, I hear like um, department chair or something like that where you get a little promotion. You've been putting in the time and you get some kind of even title out of it. Um, but it's it also too is a hope, wanting that to happen. So the Six of Swords, you're moving forward here. Some of you too, this can be a card of travel. Um, there's not like a ton of indications here of travel, but it can be. It is moving into smoother territory, though, either way, and learning from your experiences. But you also have this guide with you. And so for some of you, it's that connection with your higher self through the high priestess and knowing that you're being divinely guided, knowing that you are never alone in this journey. Okay, even when with the high priestess, that's a card of being a little bit solitary. 
it's not a sadness. It's not alone. It's it's being um, insulated in some ways from energies around you that are just not necessarily a fit. You know, the high priestess would rather be by herself than be around a bunch of conflict. Or just even like we talked about with kind of a situation, if it wasn't moving forward, it's also too not allowing that to become an obsession, right? And so um, it's a, you have a beautiful reading here though, Aquarius. I do like this. And I also like it too, that you've ended in your own energy, right? With the, um, with the air there, so. All right, so you have here a big happy changes, okay? So I, def I definitely can see that here. You've got powerful major arcana with, um, you have the first four. I mean, I'm sorry, we're going to have to do this. I apologize to do this at the end of the reading, but that is pretty cool. You don't see this very often, okay? I mean, I wish I had a card holder right now. I do own one. I just don't have it here. But, whoa, something just fell. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, but that is pretty cool. Okay, I had to fix that light a minute. Sorry. All right, we have big happy changes here. Then you had the situation will improve, all right? And so I definitely see that, though, things moving forward. They say be assertive. And you've got within the next few weeks, so you've got changes moving ahead in a positive way. And you have here a yes, okay? And it's that big emphatic yes. You create your own reality here, Aquarius. So you can have, do, or be anything. I love you, and I'll be back again soon.